You know, usually uh, the launch of a new car gets people excited, but I am very excited to see all these old ladies and gentlemen out here. I mean, the, so, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a loss for words. Uh, joining us now is Mr. Rainer Rush. He's the chairperson for the Old Wheelers Club. And I mean, sir, currently we're in your museum and what a incredible Absolutely monument to motoring this is. Beautiful, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please tell us about the, about the um, Old Wheelers Club, the museum, and what uh, the club is trying to promote in society. Yeah. The Old Wheelers Club of Namibia was founded in 1986, um, back still at a place in, in town. And then in 2013, we managed to secure this property where we are currently on, and we started building the clubhouse here. Yeah. Our main aim is to encourage the preservation and also use, not daily use, yeah. but occasional use yeah. of these beautiful old cars we have here. Um, all of the cars you see here belong to our members. Some have more than one. I think the most, the member with the most cars has about 30 cars. What? Not all in running condition. Okay, though. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, I mean, it must take a lot of effort to maintain these cars. I mean, you know, you probably have to go get a crankshaft somewhere and put it in your suitcase and fly back. And, and get it back. First, you need to find one. That's the biggest challenge. Yeah. Um, as long as they are running awesome, of course, once you're looking for parts, yeah. body parts are difficult to get here in Namibia. Um, often overseas, you still get parts, but then the transport is, of course, a yeah. bit of a challenge. Um, mechanical parts, fortunately, is an is a easier story. But yeah, with most of the cars, you need to import it from overseas. Absolutely. So, um, sir, you know, what, um, what inspired the formation of the Old Wheelers Club? How long has it uh, been in existence? And I mean, um, just tell us about the community, because I mean, there's so much passion that goes into maintaining these vehicles. Yeah. The club was originally founded by I think, about six founding members. Um, four of them are still with us these days, um, also still in, the, in, in Namibia. Um, and the main idea came from, yeah, a lot of people started playing with cars, yeah. building them up, fixing them up, but there was no formal, formal grouping around it and everybody just went on its own. And that's when some of the founding members came together and said, well, let's, let's start the Old Wheelers Club yeah. and let's really formally promote these beauties here. But so what always stood out for me is how this community has, you know, uh, come together and, um, you know, because I mean, this is a capital intensive uh, exercise, but, uh, you know, there's so much passion to uh, promote motoring throughout history. Uh, what, 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 what does it take to maintain a vehicle that is, you know, I mean, there's, there's some cars here that are over 50 years old. What does it take to maintain these kind of vehicles? Yeah. The oldest, oldest car we had in here, unfortunately, that's left us recently, is a 1928 Ford Model A. Um, maintaining it on the cost, it really depends. Yeah. Um, some cars that were expensive already when they were built, of course, are still expensive today. Yeah. So there you talk about a yeah, few hundred thousand. <laughs> um, some special Mercedes go up to a, above a million. Wow. Um, I saw a, a nice Gullwing for sale in South Africa recently yeah. for 1.1 million. Oh. South African Giants. Yeah. Um, other cars like that blue Opel here at the back, for example, I bought it for 30,000. It cost me so far maybe another 10 grand. Yeah. So it's not, not necessarily yeah. that expensive. So, but uh, so where does one uh, find the nice vehicles? Because I mean, you know, a lot of people go barn, barnstorming, you know, and uh, I, I think in, in, in the hidden parts of the country, you really find some interesting vehicles. So where do you find, where, where do some of these vehicles come from? Um, a lot of the vehicles were, were bought and built up in the, in the 70s already. Mm -hmm. um, and then now currently uh, um, inherited by the granddaughter, grandson of the, of the original member. Um, these days it's, it's fairly difficult to still find a, a nice old car in a good condition. That is, it is also original. Yes. That's also quite original. Not have a turbo stuck in there. Turbo stuck or some, or fuel injection something just cut <laughs> off just to make it a plus bucky. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I think most of the cars that are already in the club stay in the club. It's being sold then to another member who ever has interest in the, in the vehicle. Awesome. So, like, I, I, I'm at a loss for words. Like, I, I need, my, my car is not 12 years old, so I don't know if it qualifies as an old vehicle. Another 12 and then, then we can talk. Okay, cool. But, sir, please walk us through some of the vehicles, because, I mean, there's so much to see. Uh, just walk us through some of the highlights. We'll do that, yes.
All right, so, so what are we looking at over here? Here we have our smaller range of cars. Yeah. Nice little Fiat, oh. made in Italy from 1970. La Dolce Vita. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Beautiful Stunning vehicle. Installed, fully running condition. Um, then we have a British vehicle here, a Morris panel van. Wow. Mostly used by our building contractors. Uh, you see it's a two-seater with a big loading load bin at the back. Of course, made for the British wet weather, so it's closed off, not, yeah. a, not a bucky like we know here. <coughs> then again, a British MG. MG. <coughs> and then we're going over to the bigger Americans here. Ooh, they, they, they know how to do it big. Ni 1947 Chevrolet, six-cylinder engine. Love the bench seat. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. Bench streets and, and also the roundings here of the cars are just just something amazing. And it, you know, proper steel. I would I would knock yep. it, but it's a museum, so we don't touch. <laughs> so we don't touch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Over here we have a 1947 Buick. They right. really don't make uh, mm, the, 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 the emblems. The emblems like they used to be. Like Let me just also have a look at the grill here. Wow. There is something you don't don't see these days anymore. Sure, the workman, uh, the, the craftsmanship is craftsmanship just crazy. is amazing. Yeah. This car has a straight eight-cylinder engine, drives like a dream and also moves quite a bit. Yeah. Of course, with the current fuel prices. Uh, can be yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's but, why but, you only drive it once in a while. Yeah, but I mean, also the feeling you get when you drive these vehicles. Overall, if you drive that old vehicle and people wave at you and smile, it's, it's just something else. It's, oh, man. Usually no aircon. No oh. power steering. You use the natural air car. <laughs> <laughs> a stunning. Oh, beautiful, Just beautiful antique bike. Oh, my apologies. Oh. Um, this Buick here is actually from 1938. It originally came from Zimbabwe and it was used as a government vehicle with the government there. Wow. Shoot, it's stunning. And I love, you know, you know just, just the, 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 the design is crazy. I mean, you know, this very long, like a cylindrical long bonnet. Nose with, the, with the grill coming out. Yeah, these beautiful lights just protruding and <laughs> these like wheel arches are just incredible. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Shoo. And I, I mean, you know, it's a very handy place to keep your spares <laughs> on the sides. <laughs> Don't need to move your luggage to get your, to your spare wheel. Yeah. Okay, we have another Buick over here. Another Buick over here. Also from 1938. Beautiful vehicle. So you see the similarities between the cars. I would feel like Al Capone um, driving around in one of these. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. With your hat. Yeah, and the Tommy gun. <laughs> but this looks presidential. And then, we're, then we're moving over to the more luxury British vehicles again. A 1952 Austin. Um, it was also restored, actually, only only recently. And this car is also often booked for weddings, um, matric farewells, things like that. Absolutely stunning, and I love the hue of the paint. I mean, you know, it's it's, it's not a typical color, and I think uh, I do think it could use uh, more lights. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just have a look at these. Last stunning, lights here. stunning, stunning, stunning vehicle. Absolutely amazing. Wow! 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 Oh, wow, and now we're back in America. Mm, now we're back in America again. Here we have a 1946 Ford, 3.9 liter V8 engine. Oof. So one of the big boys. Yeah, yeah. Absolute pleasure also to drive these cars. Just the reversing is a bit difficult. You don't see much through the small window at yeah. the back and you only have one mirror here. So reversing is a, is a bit of a pain, but going forward is absolutely it's a lovely dream. in it. Sure. And, I, and I, I love the white walls. Where can one get white walls these days? Difficult. Yeah. There are some, some um, retailers that still have original white wall tires. And then you also get the, some inlays which you just put in between the tire and the rim to make it look like a, as a uh, white wall. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Chevy. There we go. And, the, and this is like a, a Verk Bucky. He's a Verk Bucky. Verk Bucky. Plastic. 1941 Chevrolet pickup. You could see on the pictures what it looked like before the owner restored it. Sure. That took a lot of love. And that took a sincere amount of love, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, these old cars are still fairly basic to work on. Yeah. And there's not much electronics or weird stuff. So yeah. it's, it's relatively easy to get, get going again. I love the natural aircon. Of course, built, built for the hot Namibian weather. Yeah. You can roll out the, the front window. 
imagine cruising through the, the back roads, like, like the C28, you know, going to Swakopmund <laughs> or going down south to Helmeren housing or something. It, it must be interesting with, with such a bucky. I also have a 1939 Chevrolet similar to this one, and it actually drives like a hard old bucky. So <laughs> going to Swakop with that one is a, is a journey of a few days. Yeah. And You're going to need a break after, afterwards. You definitely, you need in between breaks as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Oof. And, 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 uh, and this then you Chevy. Have a slightly is newer model from 1955, also Chevrolet. And these Apaches are still, I don't want to say common, but there are a few around of them here in Namibia. Yeah. People love them. It's a typical American big car. Yeah. Which we know from the movies. Uh, but I, but w w what really strikes me is, is the color palette of some of these older vehicles. It's very subdued, but also quite, you know, uh, vivid in its subtlety. Mm. Yeah. Um, originally, I think Henry Ford was the guy that actually started it only making black cars. Yeah, yeah. You can have it in any Basically color. Basically for cost, as long as it's black. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then, of course, we have the VW the Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah. Yes. Oh. This is probably the only one, the oldest running Beetle in Namibia, still with the pretzel windows here at the yeah. back. And this car, actually, the, the owner found part of it in a river here somewhere in Windhoek, pulled it out, and then he found another half of it somewhere else and built them together Wait, again. in a river? In a river here, yes. Wow. <laughs> no, that, take, that takes love and commitment. Absolutely, yeah. Shoot. And I, I love the number plates. I see a lot of uh, some of the vehicles really have uh, really nice to, number plates that kind of uh, mm. talk to the year model. To the to the year model, yeah. Wow. Of course, these days it's it's a bit difficult to get a number plate like that, but yeah. some people were still lucky. Yeah. And I, I I love the steel plate. I mean, there's just so much character about yeah. them. No old car needs to have a steel plate. Yeah, no, you mm. can't. And no personalized plates, please. <laughs> no personalized plates. Don't put your name on your plate. On your I'm plate, sorry. yeah. Yeah. Um, this one actually also still has runs on six volt. Not 12 volt like we normally know it. Okay. So Stunning getting, vehicle. Stunning vehicle. Then we have a beautiful Citroen here. This one belonged to one of the founding members of the club. He unfortunately passed away. But his grandson inherited it and um, they are planning to fully restore it also again in the, in the next few years. But so how do you balance restoring your vehicle and keeping its, its character? Yeah. Okay, this one, they won't, won't redo the paint, yeah. but um, redo the mechanics. Um, it needs to be in a, in a good driving condition again. I mean, the paint is still really good here. Yeah. So if it's, if it's all rusted up, then of course you need to, yes, to yes. look at restoring. But if it's not really needed, then you can just keep it. Wow, but I, 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 I love it. And I mean, I, I can just imagine the, the feeling you get when you're driving this vehicle. You know, you really it's, feel like you're transported yeah. into a new era. In a different era. era. Yeah, yeah, so. And actually, Citroen is also one of the more luxury cars, very well technically thought through and designed. Um, there's, a, there's an advert from a later model car where they actually only drove it on three wheels on a racetrack. Wow. And the car didn't tip over. Really? But such well was it balanced. That's stunning, so, yeah. Boom, and then, and then now we come the, to the... Okay, I'm sorry what I said about the personalized plates. <laughs> this one works, though. <laughs> um, this plate actually resembles the farm where the car was found on. Okay. So in that case, of course, it makes sense. Yeah. Again, the car it used to belong to a, a German, um, German guy that had a farm here back in the day and then was left to basically rot on the farm. The current owner found it there in a very desolate bad condition yeah. and spent a lot of money to fix it up properly again. I love it. I love it. And yeah, I mean, this, this is a proper machine. This one Land won't Rover let you is, down. of course, very well known here. Yeah. Shoo. Ah, oh, man. As you can see, also the inside was beautifully restored. And absolutely, you know, kept authentic. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then, of course, with the wooden trolleys. Yeah. Just for control. 
<laughs> awesome, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll be back after the break, uh, and then we'll continue our tour of the Old Wheelers Museum. But it is an absolute experience. Please make sure you come through and check it out for yourself. But we'll see you after the break. Okay, so we're continuing our tour of the Old Wheelers Club Museum, and I mean, we have to kick it off with the caddy. So the tell us about this vehicle. American steel. This is a 1954 Cadillac. Oh. It was imported from the US about two years ago by one of our members. Um, you can see it's still left-hand drive, and also running on six volt. You can't imagine a big car like this running wow. on a six volt battery. Uh, just comparing the size to the Combi here, you think a Combi is a big car, <laughs> carry like it's almost. Yeah, because they, they can carry a soccer team. <laughs> this can carry a family. Yep. Yeah. Maar genoeg bagasi. And that in luxury, yes. Yeah, yeah. Shoo. I mean, this is presidential. I, mean, I, I can imagine, you know, uh, JFK or, you All know. All these guys. So, I, mean, I mean, it is an upper class, more luxury yeah. vehicle here. And, and, um, and, and the details are crazy. I mean, look at this emblem and, yeah. and just. Uh, that, that the is emblem here, yeah, just the, the bumper in front. All you can see time. the steel price was quite, it was a lot <laughs> lower back then. <laughs> steel and petrol. Yeah, near. <laughs> okay, and then, of course, our good friend is, you know, he's also a member of the he's Old Wheelers Club. He's also a member with us, and he has quite a few combis, as you know. Yeah. Um, this is one of his really oldest, nicest ones, also standing in the museum. And, and I, I love that it was restored authentically. You know, no, no LED no, lights and, you no know, funny changes. tricks. Um, yeah. as, it, as it came, maybe even better than it came from the factory. Ah, but this is stunning, this is stunning. Okay, so, uh, oof, this is also quite nice. And I love that, I love the, like the, these, these wheels. This is just crazy. Yeah, then we're going over to the German cars again. Um, a 1936 DKW. So this, this was the precursor to, to Audi. That is actually the precursor to Audi, yeah. yeah. Audi was formed of three, four different companies, um, where Auto Union was one. You already see the, the Audi rings here. Yeah. Um, interesting about this car also, this is still metal. The rest of the car is all wooden based. Wow. And just covered with a, with a leather. And uh, is that the handbrake? <laughs> uh, that's actually the gears. Really that's actually the gears? Two change your gears, yes. Wow, 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 wow. Similar to, wow. to Trabant and also some of the Citroëns. Yeah. And can you tell us a bit about, because uh, uh, I see a lot of the cars have plaques on, kind of talking about, you know, their, their history, yeah. um, their authentication, and some of the shows they've been. Let's maybe start here at the left. This is our normal Old Wheelers Club of Namibia badge, which we also still sell today. Then a lot of the older folks still remember this one, the AA. If you were stranded with your car next to the road somewhere and you were a member of them, then they would, would help you to, <laughs> to get your car going again. Yeah. And then this is from the German, or actually the Netherlandish um, Auto Union Club, the emblem and logo. But I love it. And the thing is, you can see the workmanship in every little detail. This and is most of these parts were still built manually, yeah. not big machines that, yeah. that automated everything. Sure, and uh, uh, this radiator is also not uh, <laughs> not the smallest on the market. Nope. Yeah. Stunning, 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 stunning. You can also see it originally it didn't have any indicators, so these indicators were, were fitted later. Only. Okay, just to make it street legal. Just to make it a bit more yeah. street legal, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Wow. Oh, and the Borgward? And then we're going over to Borgward, also a German vehicle. Unfortunately, the company doesn't exist anymore. Um, the Chinese tried to revamp it a few years ago, but I also understand that that didn't work out. Um, one of the iconic northern Germany vehicles we have here. This one originally came from the coast and was now bought by one of our members here in Windhoek. And 
of course, also standing in the museum. I, I can imagine road trips across the country in this vehicle. I mean, it's just uh, it's summer, summer days. Out of the ordinary. Yeah. Yes. yes. Wow. Then we have a nice this Jag. British Jaguar here, 1952 model, also really in a, in a top condition. Um, this car is, also belongs to one of the founding members, Wow. Um, who is still, still around. Um, but stunning vehicle, and I mean just that British elegance, beautiful clean lines, and I mean just the styling. And the, the, the sorting of arrangement of the lights, and yeah. then again also the Jaguar here is of course something you don't sure. actually get any, any newer cars anymore with these yeah. nice emblems. So. I actually think that Jaguar, pro, that Jaguar emblem costs as much as my car. It's <laughs> a good chance for that, yeah. <laughs> ah, and then of course we have the, the Mercedes. Ah. This is the Ponton range, end 1950s. Um, this one is a 1957 model. And the owner actually has the same one again, also in jean. Nice. Which he and his family took on a trip to Cape Town a few years ago. So no problems at all driving as if you're sitting in your in your living room. Um, Literally. <laughs> I mean, for a car that age, and it still drives perfectly. Yeah. Even to Cape Town. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Then we're moving over to the German Opels here, two wow. Opel Records, both from 1957. Um, Real family car, you know. Family car, smallish engine, but they were one of the cars back in the day. Yeah. A lot of, lot of German families took them once a year to Italy to, on, a, on a holiday trip. Wow. Just imagine going in a car like that, four persons plus luggage. Yeah. No, you've sorted. And you've sorted, uh, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, this is your vehicle. This is one of my vehicles, yeah. yes. Oh, um, and and, and um, what, what do you love most about this car? It's simplicity. Yeah. Um, this car actually came from Gubabis, uh, a guy there had it, and in 2005 it was our raffle car here at the day of the old wheeler. And you almost I, no, let it I, go. I didn't, I didn't want it. Um, <laughs> actually a young, young man won it, didn't want to have it, gave it to his dad. Yeah. And the dad retired a few years later and um, then I was fortunate enough to, to be able to buy it from him. Yeah, he was like, I know, I know, um, I know you love this vehicle. <laughs> and I mean, just also again, having a look at these, these rounding shapes here, the nice chrome work. And then the simplicity of the car. Um, Absolutely. Working, working it, I'm not a mechanic myself, but I, I'm able to work these kind of cars. Wow. And that's the, the big beauty of them. Awesome. So, Mr. Nicholas, you have now brought your beautiful uh, vehicle from the 1930s to the museum. Why have you chosen to exhibit it here? Uh, well, because I'm, I'm proud of my uh, old lady. <laughs> that's all. It's a um, Chevrolet 1934. So it's almost uh, 90 years old, running nicely, still with a uh, six volt battery, just a few change inside, but not so much. And I reduce the paint uh, once. Excellent. Really, I get it for since about 20 years now. Excellent. So we really appreciate you taking the time, <coughs> giving us a spin around your vehicle, and we've had so much fun with you. Perfect. OK. OK. Bye. Boom. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that has been Mario and Nikaz. What an experience here at the Old Wheelers Club. Good people, great food, and uh, just a wonderful, wonderful day. Enjoying the entire automotive history that the country has to offer. So yeah, if you haven't uh, passed by the museum uh, or enjoyed the lovely food here at the Old Wheelers Club, please do make a point of checking it out.